Right, hello everybody. Welcome to match day number nine in uh, G-Man Division 2A, Rebel. Uh, up against Al Bundy, which is no outdoor. Um, he has got not much, but he does have a blodge jump up tree. And a tackle mighty blow, dauntless juggernaut, sidestepping dancer, and not much else. Um, we have had a... Beastman die lately, so we haven't got much guard, but you know, got a mighty blow there, which is alright. So, got a bit more killingness now, actually, with the two mighty blows, two claw bombs, and a claw mighty. We've actually got a decent amount of killingness, finally. Um, just need to, you know, add more skills across the team. But, um, yeah, giving up the wizard and. Wizard and Eldril is not idea, is it? Because he'll probably take Eldril and try to win, even though it doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> because it's Rebel, and he's probably better off losing and not having anybody die. <laughs> so probably what he should have done was take two, two apples. But instead, he's going to take Eldril and try to win. <laughs> ah yes, and Skrull Dudes here, because Noamdo is known for taking 10 years to play games of Blood Bowl, um, I've invited Skrull Dude in here to uh, co-commentate and hopefully stop me losing my mind. Um, we'll know. fail on both counts, I'm sure. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Fuck's sake! Because and yeah, this is going to be a tour, man. You know, brace yourselves. This is going to be boring as fuck. Um, that's the best way to sell a thing, isn't it? But you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a like and subscribe. Don't bother watching it because it's going to be boring as fuck. It's a rebel game. What can I say? <laughs> Four minutes every fucking turn. Fortunately, it's a rebel game, so every match matters, and it's a regular season game, so it's super important. Every result. <laughs> yes. It is important for me going for the playoffs. Um, not important to Noamto, but um, I think his shot... Well, Noamto already secured. Is he already eliminated from the playoffs? Um, I mean, he's not already eliminated, but it, effectively it's going to be very hard for him. Um, wish I could put the league table up, but it, it's interesting. 18 points is Toast Guy and Hindi. Um, Dave O's on 17, but he's got a game in hand. I'm on 15 with a game in hand. Thomas T's on 15 with a game. with, with He's played. Thomas T's on 15. And Al Bunny's on 12 with a game in hand, which is not dull. So, you know, if he wins, he's on the same amount of points as me. <laughs> but um, I still don't think it's going to be enough to challenge, you know. Even if he wins this, I don't think he'll be, he'll be able to get yeah, in the playoffs. To be honest, because his team is just not very good, is it? He can win. He can win with a wizard in the in the thing. Obviously, he can win any game, but his just development isn't there, is it? Ah, oh, glorious backdoor, Billy. Uh, yeah, exactly. Seasons, yeah, yeah. Seasons really good. He's going to take the full fucking four minutes, man. Um, what's he called? Uh, Artemis Black conceded to Al Bundy because in in uh, in Blue Works he's taking three yeah. minutes a turn. So now he's going to be taking four, isn't he? So this is going to be torture. Um, I mean, as we say every time we complain about these, the time's been given to them. You can't really discredit the coach for using the time that's been given. It's just a structural problem with the league if it's uh, an issue. Yeah, exactly. And and look, I signed up to a four-minute league, so it's my fault. <laughs> you know, so it's not like I'm not expecting the league to change to uh, tailor to my desires. But um, it's obviously pretty shit. <laughs> End the turn, for fuck's sake! End the fucking turn, man! Right, 
This is good, I think. Bit weak to a blitz. That's not a good idea, is it? Weak to PD as well, gives him a bizarre was across to the side, but... Yeah, yeah, you can punish with a perfect D. It's a Bernie offset of all of us, it always punishes people, it's just how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Alright, gonna go like this. Hope it's good enough. Wrestles on the bench because he's on a 7, piece of shit. Thanks, Lean Gary. With any more injuries, Jim, do you think that the future of this team for the rest of the season is just going to be doing the dreaded rebuilding phase, or you just kind of don't care about games, just try and replace your wrestle guy with one that isn't broken and terrible? <laughs> um, I want to play, I want to make the play. Two heads on your carrier. Yeah, well, I want to make the playoffs and win the playoffs, you know. At the end of the day, I think my team is still really good. Um... It's just, um, what is it? I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I want to try and win. I definitely want to try and win all my games that are left and try and make the playoffs. Um, but You're around fifth in your division, and how many from your division go into, into the playoffs, and how many go into the uh, fake playoffs? <laughs> Three go to the real playoffs, one goes to fake playoffs. So like the fourth, fourth goes to fake playoffs. The top three go to real playoffs. Or whatever they're calling it. Sorry, Rebel, I'm not in you. I'm not. I'm not up on all the jargon you guys call your stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a challengers cup. Even yep. though it pr should probably be challenged cup. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deep kick, and he does have a kicker. To be fair. Um, one, two, I think a more reasonable compromise might have been a just to increase playoffs to 128 and increase a singular round, but playoffs already, I imagine, might take a while, since it has to hold up the entire league to run those. Yes, yeah, that was the thing, they didn't they didn't want to do that, um, but I do think it's the best idea, of course, because it just makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Six rounds of playoffs and making it to seven seems not so bad, but playoffs you have to be more lenient with scheduling than you would be during regular season as well so you can't just call a week and say well you didn't get a your game and you have to kind of wait for delays and games you can't just have draws yeah yeah true true enough true enough is that is that a thing that, that yanks say true enough <laughs> I don't know <laughs> it'd be up north but I'm southern so that ain't really a thing I didn't pick up the ball again Oh my god! Oh, you know what they say. Picking up the ball against elves. Do it sometimes. This is two games that I haven't fucking picked up the ball. Jesus. One, two, three, four, five, six. I, see, I can pass it to the strength four anyway, so it's alright. <laughs> yeah, Gurzu. That's why it doesn't matter, isn't it? That's exactly why it doesn't fucking matter the four minute fucking turns. <laughs> Make a comment about, you know, if Jim had used more of his time and just doesn't use them properly and that's why he misplays, etc. or something. Or... Yeah. See, this is just more evidence that Jim doesn't care about the ball, he just wants to kill things, which is actually pretty much true, but I mean, who really cares about the ball in Blood Bowl? <laughs> It's not really that important. Yeah. Thank you very Boring. much, Brian Mix, by the way. Sorry to interrupt Squirrel Dude, but thank you very much, Brian Mix, for staying fantastic for three months. Absolutely glorious. Thank you very much. It, well, you have Claw Mighty Blow, and he's a dwarf, so that was definitely a possibility we all had in mind, Skuro, is that <laughs> Skuro dice would happen, and you just frenzy trapped yourself, and it didn't matter, and you just smashed his team. For hopefully beating him and then missing the playoffs so I don't have to play him in the first round again and completely choke. That'd be really cool. Which is pretty great. Not the second, which I don't think is a huge difference, but. It is. He's got to stop learn. He's got to learn to stop being a dickhead eventually, Matt. Oh, so. <laughs> so there you go. In fact, I'll just ban him for 24 hours. That's, that's better. 
I think Norm does a good player, I think he'll play it smart. Having said that, he has got a dancer here, which is looking pretty exposed. This could have been the best thing I did, not picking up the ball, eh? Flip me, guys. It's Squirrel Dude, Lean Gary. Hello, Yak. Just seen me, uh, you've just missed me, in fact. Just completely forgetting to pick up the ball. Again. For the second time in about fucking two or three days. Just playing shite lately. And uh, I'm now going to have to pass it to this uh, Strength 4 guy. To uh, see you know. It's a great situation feeling. Uh, you gotta throw the ball and put the ball in the air against elves. It's uh, really comfortable doing that every time. Yeah. <laughs> Crushing right, once, it, once it's through because the sheer panic, it's like seeing a horror movie. You feel terrified and then you feel glad that you're alive. It's all <laughs> fine. I mean, if I make the pass, it's fine. It's actually good. Um, Mr. Ball, so that actually is pretty much fine. Yeah, he didn't know. Did he have Dallas? He did. Once he has, it's Dallas. I can't see in the tiny He's got yet. Dauntless Juggernaut, Tackle, Mighty Blow, and Sidestep. He still has a way to get 1Ds, but he doesn't have the strip ball to just 2D completely fine against that player, so yeah. Yeah. Chance, though. I guess he Kept just guard. Right. <laughs> this is fun. Flip me, guys. One, two, three, four. Ah, oh, well, there's a Venga bus up here. Probably want to protect him, though, right? I've just realised. <laughs> oh, God. Shouldn't have based him, he's just giving him assist. His blitz. Well, I like this. I like this having a having a dirty player in the in the, the Venga bus. So if he fails the leap, in he gets stamped on. That's pretty good. So making a relevant block first. Good, good. Right, here we go. Right. The GFIs are better uh, percentage-wise, but well, let's have a look. Let's have a look with a, with a reroll. Let's see. Let's see exactly what the difference is. And some, but I should have picked it up last turn, then there'd be no problem at all. I've got some uh, league management to deal with, because someone scummed in a league where you can't scum, so that's fun. Oh dear. <laughs> it's only 3% better. Thing they it's only 3% better to do the cheer fire, so it's better just pass. <laughs> Easy. Good. No SFL. Ouch. <laughs> oh, there's a fireball. Plus Eldro. Kind of forgot about the fireball. Didn't do myself any favours, did I? Forgetting about that. Airballs are shit every time. <laughs> no, this could be good enough. We could still win in the game. Got the ball down. 
which was pretty lucky. Would have been pretty shit if he hadn't got the ball down. <sighs> no, I'm just gonna fucking go off because I can't handle fucking taking ten years. Au secours de ce joueur, ça va faire mal. This has actually turned very clever, hasn't it? Because now, if for some reason he doesn't score here, or you know, make it impossible to, for me to win, at least, <laughs> at least somehow, if there's a chance, I've got to show hands back uh, to get the ball. But yeah, what a disaster! ton meilleur moment dans ta carrière de joueur, Bob. Le jour où j'ai marqué mon premier touchdown. Juste avant, j'avais arraché la tête d'un type qui m'a saoulé dans les vestiaires. Pour rire, je lui ai collé le ballon sur la nuque et j'ai envoyé valser le tout dans l'embut adverse. Les arbitres ont dit que c'était parfaitement valable. Donc, touchdown. La FAE a changé les règles le lendemain. est en vue. De souplesse ne serait pas de trop. Ils mettent la pression sur le porteur. Ça se tient. Bon blocage défensif. Ça va faire mal demain matin. Ce 
joueurs plus tard, s'ils se réveillent. This was not a bliss tea show. This was just, um, Jimmy forgetting to pick up the ball, and then doing elf things on a wizard and Eldril. Not that the pickup would have mattered, to be fair. It was just the uh, wizard, wasn't it, really? Should have expected to hit half the targets, it's just that usually wizards are just kind of shit, because wizards are kind of shit. It was an outrageous wizard hitting the ball carry. If I hadn't hit the ball carry, it would have been a shit wizard. So it was not a great, not a great play, I don't think. But um, you got Their balls are frustrating, because they're um, also okay, they're kind of... Uh, they're terrible for attrition, is really what it is. They're just awful, awful for killing things, which is what you think they should be okay at, but they're terrible at it. To make sure I'm not giving any any advice, um, what is your approach going to be going to the next turn? And have conceded that you're going to be allowing a score on your first offense. Good question, Squirrel Dude. Um, probably gonna like bite my keyboard, maybe, or uh, bang my head off the wall, or um, you know, something like that, basically. <laughs> it's over, isn't it? It's, it's game's over. I just try to hit stuff, I guess. I guess kill his tree. Kill his tree and, f you know, feel good about myself. <laughs> hey, um... You haven't got any casualties yet? Do you even, like, try, have a chance at a draw by somehow scoring once here and then again in the second half? No. Players or something like that? No, there's no chance. It's over. It's over. I guess the best thing you could players. I guess it's who you want to hunt at this point. Score. Most likely. They're pretty good. That's a call benefit soutien. How many games are left in the Rebel season that you need to be, um, and so would a loss at this point kind of end your playoff run, or would you still just be basically chasing wins desperately in the final few games <laughs> at that point? A, a loss here basically kills us, because I, I actively would not like to qualify for the, uh, the Challenged Cup. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, that seems like an actual, yeah, that, I can imagine if your goal is to win a big championship, unless your team is, like, already kind of broken and just kind of needing development, that's going to be a, a potential, really, just a detriment. Yeah. But, uh, when... You, if you think a trophy is cool, then, you know, it's still pretty nice, but if you don't, then... That's not helpful. It's pretty much good. So, yeah. So... 
Uh, like that. I think Eldra, I guess, gives you resources. a chance, though, doesn't it? It kind of gives you a chance in the second half because now all the inducements are gone. Yeah. Numbers maybe. advantage with Eldril, or at least equality. Reroll Dota, I don't think he has any babes because he was down 350, so he's able to get exactly a wizard and Eldril without spending any of his cash. Since he's what else, he probably didn't. Facing Kill Chaos, he might not have wanted to spend any money. To make sure he had money to buy back players after this game. Uh, draws is probably possible here. It requires him not getting a one turn because obviously the one turn just kind of ends the game. To the next half drawn, forcing a quick score and then taking a 2 2 draw is still possible, I think. I don't know if you can ask for much more reasonable than that. It basically, require massive casualties or terrible KO recovery rolls. Avec le Blood Bowl, c'est que c'est fichtrement fédérateur. Des orques, des nains, des humains et même des hommes bêtes, tous réunis pour en découdre sur le terrain. No kick there, by the way. No kick. Just no, kick's a pretty terrible skill. It's why it's bad. Because one in six times, you just get that result anyway. I hate kick. It's okay on certain teams. After I like kick dirty players, but it's... People claim it to be a tier one skill in certain uh, tournament formats. Just isn't true. No, Amto hasn't been playing too slow. He's been playing about to what a three minute turn would be. Which is pretty reasonable, really. In an advantageous position, so he hasn't needed to really. Uh, you have it. D'après sa bio, il fait aussi de l'animation pour les goûters d'anniversaire. Ciao. Kick, kick. Like I said, I like kick on dirty players, so I kind of like kick on undead or just because not for their first def. Well, not for the first defense, but usually for um a charter, but. but 
Very low priority skill. Cause I like, I'd rather get like wrestle on my linemen first. So they can go and die more efficiently. Not to be on the LOS, which I hate. So makes sense for the skill, but I just hate not having linemen on the LOS because it means I have to put something that's actually worth it, worth a damn on orcs or on um a degree, but even undead. Jim, at what point do you generally think it's valuable or worthwhile to begin heavily investing in Tate removing a tree? Be a very risky moment. The player stuck on the dude that, that is designed to get your player stuck on him to protect all of their other more valuable and functional pieces. Yeah, if they stick him on the LOS, you, you might as well have a go at taking him down if you've got tackle claw pommin it, but um Otherwise, I try to uh, strand him on a lino like he's done himself. <laughs> C'est toujours risqué de tout donner pour piquer un string. Hmm. Je me demande s'il courrait aussi vite avec une patte ou deux casées. Oh, Nagel Blitzer, yeah, yeah. Obviously, in a um. BB2016 format where you don't have to put MVPs on a zombie. Really hard to ever get M SVP on them, but in Blood Bowl 2 where you are... Or like the majority of your MVPs are going to end up on zombies early on, it's it's going to happen. You're going to get to 16 randomly. The reason you want to get them block, which is the other reason I don't really like kick. Because it could be block and that could go into guard, or could be wrestle and go into dirty player. Like I kind of like wrestle dirty player more, just because... Yeah. Take a ghoul. If you take your carrier ghoul off on defense, you have a spot where they can play on, like, with, like, orcs, where you end up having stony positionals that you don't want, um, on there. Or you don't want to put, I'm sorry, you don't want to keep a, an actual player on the LOS, so you have, means you're really awkward. Orcs especially get really awkward if you have any linemen on the LOS. Because they might do a strong LOS, but. It's so weird, I haven't played them in a while. Three rules, three turns, failed catch animation, there it is. Don't know why. There's fine, yeah. Animation that to run with the passes is so awkward because it's never they don't replay the pass they replay a pass from like under the square the ball was previously in it's quite awkward <laughs> all like coming in from the crowd for some reason those uh re-rolled catches somebody's even like scattered pickups it's Yeah, with Undead, you can run three goals. I think you should just always have four, because they're just so much better players than at a certain point, maybe you lose out a bit. Because they're so fragile, but I'd rather just have a ghoul hanging out than a spare zombie. Because if I most the player I'm most likely to lose is going to be a ghoul. So I'd rather have a ghoul to hang out and replace him, even for that extra 30k, because he's, he's going to be value. Gives you so much more mobility to re reposition. You want to do the two reroll start, right? I think that's a bit risky, but you can do it if you have, um... Once you'd start with four, you just run four ghouls. And have 12 players. 
guess if you're doing like uh, the season reroll, are you going to bring over some skilled players? I think I would start with the four ghouls. Yeah, I, for almost all starts, I do three ghouls, three rerolls, because that third reroll is so good with your lack of block, especially on the mummies, because you want to hit with them every turn if you can. Partial reroll of the team, so you're basically rebuying with your skilled players. I think I would do the four ghoul, two reroll start, because I have the more skilled players to... the extra little bit of volatility that's going to come with those two rerolls, and I get more ghouls to get at MVPs, and I get a spare player for fouling, and I think I like that a bit more, generally. Another turn that's about two minutes though for Noamto. He's played it fine. He hasn't been sit and think for and then do a one and nine block to start his action like we've seen some coaches do. Playing through his turn, I don't think it's been that bad. This game. Players and the positions are kinda simple, what he needs to be doing, but I guess it depends on how much you want to, like, how expensive your players are. Because in SFL, we had a three-player start rule, and we had to kind of do some awkward stuff, and I ended up doing with two rerolls because I had a... that demanded I pay a little bit less. So. That. Well, no, but you're, you don't start with only a thousand, but there's still, like, a degree to which you might need to afford to rather have more players of the reels because you just don't need it. Or maybe you have a leader or something on undead. I guess you could take it on a ghoul. You. Well, it takes a leader on undead. It's pretty, co it's cost, I guess it's says 40 TV, but... The double that could be guard, like every time I think. Jump up on a palm white. If you, uh, not jump up anymore. Could be. I'm not sure if I. Maybe on a white if he already has. A low tackle and it's not a stat double. Oh yeah, uh, to talk to you, talk about the game, it looks like strength 4. Back in the side conversation with chat. Um, double is not guard. That's interesting. Um, whites get the same effective skills access as uh, ghouls do once they get Mighty Blow. So you're just getting a more mobile player who can get um, tackle and it's just as fast. Mobile guard a bit more, but yeah. And I can see why you wouldn't want to take mummies unless they have, you know, multiple skills or are good because they get to six or they should get to 6 so quickly, especially with the pick MVP rule, that you don't really need to be carrying over a guard on me. A game or two. Just again, they're very replaceable. Up. Negates the take. Negates the. Not, doesn't negate take root. 
it negates the stand-up roll. The tree automatically gets to stand up and can move two squares. Skill. The ghouls are definitely better frenzy players. Uh, the advantage of white is taking the um, mighty blow from these. You can kind of expose them a little bit more. This is to chase down valuable targets because they're not going to just get instantly killed if they get hit back. Uh, um, it's just rebel. People rolled stats. He rolled doubles, and then he rolled doubles, and then he rolled doubles. So, blow. He's got a block. Jump up. Blood. Dodge. Yeah. Dodge tree. It's just what happens. Normals for those three. Like those are the clear. Those are the clear three you take on like all blitzers, but like whites and human blitzers and orc blitzers in particular. Those are like the three things they want. Firm. Meh. Quickly. And probably like four different trees. That's just how eternal leagues work. Because you'll get one of these freaks every so often. Like you get like Jim's team's stupid. I mean, Jim has like. But, you know, not Lizardman. I think he's trying to find three dice on this catcher to then give him two dice. Or looking for a chain push. I see a clearance here that's pretty easy, but no one could do the best as he could considering the situation. It's a 1 and 9 block, which is spooky, but. Which is. So. Ah, les joueurs viennent au soutien de leur coéquipier. C'est le moment de vérité. Jim's gone for what's a different play than what I would have done here. I don't know if it's better or worse off the top of my head. It makes the 1 in 9 and 1 in 27. Needs. Looks like it's going to need pals on the splits out. Uh, question for Jim. Did you consider the play I was looking at? This also works. Um, what, what I wanted to do was power that dancer and then get the assist and blitz this guy, which would have been better. But now it's going to be a GFI. Um, but it only my thought, push. yeah, my thought would have been to um, surf this guy. He's surfing now with the um, and then bring up the sure hands, provide the assist on the side for the second assist on the lineman, and just block and run forward. Yeah, that would have been better. Yeah. yeah, that's better. Way better. I didn't even think of that. So you go, I just roll a one anyway. I told you I couldn't fucking win. He doesn't have a canoring threat, right? Yeah, he's got the dancer that run away. Oh, he does have a canoring threat. Super. He's going to do probably a handoff in a tackle zone here. A handoff, dodge, do dodge, pass. And this is what he's going to try and do here. He's got a reroll, so it's pretty likely to ultimately work out for him. And that would seal the game. Because oh, you, you can't. Like, there's technically a chance Jim, like, gets a blitz or something. Oh, no. Yeah, there it is. Um. 
terrible KO, and he has terrible KO recoveries multiple times in a row, but that's so low on the probability odds. Oh, now it's not a mold GG, now it's actually, that's GG. That's game. Jim, as you pass now into the recovery part, into the uh, recovery and rebuilding phase of the season, everyone's favorite part of long-term leagues to develop over the next couple of games. To avoid the playoffs. And what were the rerolls he was going to need, though, Tisha? It was like... A free reroll. The catch. It was like a GFI, a pickup. A two, it was like two twos, a four plus with a reroll. It was five twos and a four plus with a reroll. Like, maybe you use it. Twos, but it was not hard. Or considering. Tu sais quoi, Jim Je sais chanter. Oh non, par pitié. Vraiment Oh Oh Pas la peine d'être méprisant. Mon coach personnel dit que j'ai une belle tessiture de baryton. Roll KO recovery rolls, which makes this a bit more frustrating with... Because there would be a possibility of, like, scoring and drawing here if he had... luck with his KOs. It's just not really a possibility. He's going to score here very quickly. Go 3-0 and then just basically hang out in a corner and not give a shit what Jim does for the next left in the game. Ça cherche clairement le corps à corps. Hey! Hey! 
J'ai déjà joué sur ce terrain, Jim. Si je me souviens bien, on avait perdu. Enfin, yep. Perdu le ballon, quoi. Pas moyen de le retrouver sous tous ces cadavres. Ah, j'avoue, j'ai été de sale humeur. Well, if he has used his the carry, then... Yeah, killing a dancer is possible. If he hasn't, then it's not going to die. He's basically saving the apothecary for his skilled players that are remaining because he's already won, so he's not going to bat apo any badly hurts to try and win. Those are going to be very hard to come by. Especially he's only one chance of him at the field on the field. Il s'acharne sur ce pauvre joueur comme des Alf Fling autour d'un sandwich. Oh là là, tu ferais mieux de ne pas rester en travers de son chemin, garçon. Le joueur est à terre et s'apprête visiblement à passer un sale quart d'heure. Je parie 5 pièces d'or que ça commence par un coup de botte. Oh, désolé de l'interruption. Oh, oh, misère. L'un des coachs a enfreint la réglementation en matière de peau de vin. Du coup, l'arbitre va devoir être, euh, comment dirais-je, honnête. I mean, you can imagine a better tree might have, like, piling on. You can, you know, palm jump up, which is terrifying, and somehow real. I guess another doubles or tackle with a pro would also be pretty good, so it doesn't get stuck in standing firm. That might be okay as well. I don't know, I, th I thought normals you'd take that, but I think I'd actually take piling on her guard on the next roll over grab. Especially for one turning attempts. I know skill treatment could be better, but I don't think of them. Just good. It's just better on its own. Everything else, you probably pay extra to have those two, like, less good skills to have block compared to a normal, compared to a regular.
Appelle ça le baiser des Nephel. Je préférerais encore me faire uriner dessus par un chien de gang que de me mettre en travers de sa coupe. Le joueur a pris le ballon et la zone d'en but est tout près. Bonne transmission, ça joue sans accro. Tapcom, you can actually, I do not believe you can pile on if you have rooted, which is very unfortunate, but it does not, in fact, allow you to break your uh, take root. Root is to fall over. And piling on, you cannot voluntarily fall over with piling on if you've taken root, so. Ils vont en découdre mano à mano, Bob. Pas pour ça. Qui poussera pas Non, mais, mais qu'est-ce qui se passe là-bas, au bord du terrain À porter des. Guru, are you referring to like him losing or like his voice Because I don't know what happened to his voice. Since sometime around the point where the game was clearly lost. Like, I mean, what else happened Because. Un failed to pick up. Elves score back on a 4 2 2 2 2, because that's what, what elves do. Machine à tuer. Oui, 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 oui. Oh, ça a dû faire mal, ça. Oh. Let's get out of bounds. A chaos warrior is going to pick it up and try and score next turn. There's no reason to reroll that. So. So yeah. So now Jim's going to have four turns to try and score a second time. It's going to be finally the Wood Elves getting all their KOs back, so that it's not going to be a mana disadvantage anymore, and then... That's probably enough.
avec vous, Chloé Le soutien suffira-t-il à prendre le dessus V7 is actually completely fine. It's just a series AV8 when it hit by Mighty Blow, it's fine. Killed, which would probably have been useful for Gem's team not to have an armor value 7 player with Russell that he can't play on defense because it dies. I'm just taking some blocks before he goes for the warrior pickup to try and give himself a chance to uh, score here. The reason you don't, you didn't use the uh, reroll, I guess if you're talking tap commit, if you're talking about the GFI, is because he's going to the score, and he's going to need rerolls on the next couple of scores every single for the next four turns. He's he needs every reroll he can get. Try and push his odds of getting a um, successful strike back. It's really his only chance. And besides, you know, just roll threes. It's easy. You're more familiar with the BB2016 MVP rule and in, in actual play. How often do you see people use it to give the tree an MVP early on when he's at five, when he's got two SVP? And there's the big KO recovery rule we were talking about. It was there is no way he's going to continue to have terrible luck on those, and he has. That's yeah, that's probably going to be the end of it. I don't really see. It's going to be very hard to steal against this team now. Sorry, to get back to the question, Nickel Blitzer. How often do you see people put the MVP on trees? You're talking about how hard it is to get to 31. I imagine it's pretty tricky. I imagine it's not very common, especially after 16. Once they get that grab guard combo, that's really all you want on them. First regard versus a tricky choice on Treeman, isn't it? Because Grab is probably more impactful on the most important turn, which is that one turn, but Guard is just kind of good for setting Bellow Us blocks and letting you actually take them. And just kind of being useful as like a guard corner every so often when you can build the cage around him. Or, you know, with him. It's probably overall better. Take it still, because Grab. A little bit less annoying for a couple of turns, we will just run away from them. Dans le tas, Jim, il y a des joueurs qui valent le coup. Aujourd'hui, c'est qui se planque tous derrière les joueurs médiocres. Yeah, everything on the tree is stationary, but you can work with a stationary guard if you're. First off, he's big enough that you can kind of work around him, and he's still providing assists when he gets in a fight. Then to pile on players on because he's like magnetic for some reason. True. Yeah, you. <sighs> Issue with grab is that you have to roll block dice with him, right? Like that's the biggest thing about him is you have to like make roll more dice to get it use out of it. With with guard, you just have to kind of stand near him, and you're probably going to get assists with him. A grab, but a um, more impactful skill probably. I just it might be even so consistently. 
successfully, Leap is the best skill you'd want on a tree. It really lets them do stuff. Oh, yeah, halflings get a roll dice because they have like four, they have four or seven re-rolls. Struggle to use all of them. TV starved in a way, like they're so low. They already get so much from inducements that you can probably afford a bit more easily to pay that 20 for that cheerleader assistant coach. Rules that other teams won't get, right? So. I'll be TV down, but they've got, I mean, like what? A player for two coaches and two, rear, two assistant, yeah, two assistant coaches and two uh, cheerleaders. Players of shitty halfling, so who cares? Wish you could get an answer, but Jim hasn't said anything in a while, so I don't think you're going to get one. I would put that in the Ask Jim in the Discord, shameless plug, um, and you might get an answer on that one. Oh, Monty's a better... He's a much better halfling coach than I am, so I would take his opinion on it more seriously than I would. His halflings and I don't, like, ever. Shut up. Is it that way, then I would just go with his opinion on it. He's better than I am, Adam. Ce joueur préfère se battre entouré.
Miz trying to put pressure on the ball here. Just it's really hard because No Amto can pretty easily get some pseudices and then just kind of hang out for at least one turn. Which is one of the reasons I think Pro was suggested early in the stream. Which is that Dodge is I mean, Blood is nice, but Pro lets him reroll that kind of stuff. But pushing the war on the tree would have been pretty good too. A tree active in the game somehow. Which is, yeah, the problem with the Wood Elf trees. Some coaches still. I know. One of the. Well, they're not. You're either. You really like them or you hate them, but I think the majority of players prefer them simply because. Dying than an elf lineman is. And they have Mighty Blow, which gives. For some reason. The one. Or the one team that gets to start with a Mighty Blow as an elf team. So they get, like, removals for some reason. I don't know why. That the decision was made, but there you have it. Yeah, trees are great on the LOS, the issue you always run into them is that sometimes they, do get, they get stuck there sometimes. Oh. In elf matchups, they're... ...tremental, because there are a lot of team value for a player that's going to be very low impact in those matchups. They're worth every penny. Stealth things. Orlando is out of rerolls, so this is one of the cases where trying to make him roll a 1 and 6 is actually kind of impactful, as opposed to usually where it does nothing. Let's roll 2 pluses, you want to make him roll 3 pluses and 4 pluses if you can. Also that a 2 plus isn't really a relevant concern. Or at least... 136 scares you when you're playing against them, you just consider it as a fait complete that they're going to make a dodge. GFIs are impossible. Some leagues, the 2 1 might be worse than 3, might be better than 3 1 because of, I don't know, touchdown differential, but yeah. I don't know, you're facing a loss, you might as well just go all out to try and get a draw. That's not necessarily true, I guess. Uh, in Against Bash teams, there may be a, a point where you just. Go ahead and concede the score because your player's health is worth more. A lot of GFIs take himself a one dice against the strength four player. I don't. Did he miscount assists? It's really interesting. He's got tackle too, so yeah, I think he just 
did some extra twos without realizing it's a strength four player that was basing him. So, I don't know. I have sure feet on that catcher. Hmm. That's better than just doing a two to get away. Okay. Worse. No, it's better if you fail the GFIs with the catcher, but not really better. Okay. And have the catcher available to provide a screen of some kind. Without more dice now. Question for no amp who is if he wants to dodge this wrestle guy. Kick guy from the wrestle guy. Because that KO is really big. Well, not just, is it? Nah, it's nice, but it's not really big. Um, to roll POWs. Uh, kick guy with his strength 4 player on the dancer which is his best odds to get him down to 3d because he's just playing for Kaz ball this is well established our bull lore I don't know if he can yeah he can't get there how third dice might have mattered. Also fine there. The, but gets it, so he will get a wrestle and the ball will go into the crowd, or it can go into the crowd three out of eight times here. Scatter is... not... okay! It's actually completely fine. So, Brands does a thing, and a draw is actually on the table. GFI's for the first turn. Game. To agree to reroll, both down there is better than a push, so that's good enough. Sometimes chaos don't need to be good, they just need to kill all the elves and they can get a draw. <laughs> B. 2 2 into 2 dice. And snake. Fails the GFI though, so this is going to be a GFI for Jim to draw. You have it. Three dice because strength four is overpowered. Gets a pal. Control skill not doing anything for killing at all. Considering if he wants to risk using a reroll. Three dice so that he is less likely to use a reroll because he wants to make sure he has a reroll on the. Um... He hasn't done it technically, but he is the pal anyway. The GFI coming up. On. C'est méchant ça. J'aime bien. It's a fake skill in this matchup, certainly. He only did something against the tree once, but the tree just got up, so you know, really never did anything. should ever wish to play as well as me unless they want to completely throw the first round of the playoffs every time they make it because that's all I do out of a playoff series against worst teams every time 
Oh, squirrel dude. I'm back, Jim. Thanks. God, that was horrible. What a fucking... What a, what a, if I only just rolled a 2 plus, I played as well as you. <laughs> could have, uh... Could have scored in the first half, and it would have been a win, wouldn't it? Would have been a win. I don't think... Uh, I'll admit, I completely threw the draw when I saw the, um... Really ...not be shit for him. It didn't matter. You just had to kill all the elves multiple times, and that was good enough. Yeah, 21 AV bricks was pretty good. Obviously loads of tackle and everything. 31 blocks, 21 AV bricks, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, uh, you know, but that, I mean, that's, that's what you expect, isn't it, really? At the end of the day, I've got loads of tackle, frenzy, piling on, my good to get 11 removals off of 38 blocks. That's what you, what is that? It's 33 percent. you expect. One in three times you, you hit them. You ever yeah. roll dice? Nice blocks, of course, so the knockdown chance is really high. And you attack also, his dodge wasn't doing anything. Yeah, it's, it's not You're crazy. You're not on box. We're doing stuff. It's really not crazy. Shit dice as well overall. Um, 36, 27, 29. <laughs> but, um... both down, I don't, well, the both downs are hard to count in these matchups, right? Because sometimes the block is just good. Like True. that, like... With Wrestle, a both down was just the best possible result you could have gotten there, really. Yes, whereas conversely, when I blitzed his Roger, it was the worst result I could have got. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, hello everybody. Uh, yeah, actually, oh, I think yeah, GFI that. percentage. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to look at the GFI percentage. But then I made I made three at the end, didn't I? Um, but before then, all right. Let's have before then, you were like making. But every time you GFI'd, you failed. Yeah, <laughs> it was the first action of your turn. Yeah, six six percent. So it was five four until the last until the last two turns. You were and you were burnt, and a lot of those were like first one reroll into. So it was like, yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah, dodges fifty seven. Fifty six. Um, the catches, the catches were all right, I guess, and the passes were good at least. <laughs> but yeah, the catch double double one, the catch didn't I? And the other one that would have just been a score. So like, there was some. Fucking... So we're good seventy five percent. It was some shit luck. Sure. It really was some shit luck when it came to the ball, but the kind of moderate or maybe even good luck when it came to punching things uh, gave us a shot. But yeah, if I'd just fucking played better on that fucking thing. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, yeah. I've confirmed. Yeah. Um, Jim, tactical question for you on that. Wrestle blitz would have both. Was a both down there a better result than the pow? Because the both down meant guaranteed that there was a chance the ball scattered into the crowd. Yeah, I think the both down was probably better because the pow it might not have gone in the crowd, right? Because he would have um, he would have sidestepped. So and surely no empty. No empty. You're in chat. Would you have sidestepped off the sideline if he had rolled a pow there on the word answer, or would you have stayed on the sideline? I think it would have gone off. I think it would have gone off because he wouldn't went in the crowd because. I had my show sure hands still ready to react, and he was quite far out of the way, so I think he would have, I think he would have gone infield. Um, I think he should have done. Anyways, no, no level ups, 30k. Um, but no one died, which is good, isn't it? And there were some SPPs, and Forth were in the fucking Challenged Cup. <laughs> Into the side. I don't know. Then, I mean, Power oh, Value 7. AV7 wrestler guy completely proved his worth that game as well. He showed why he has to stick around even though he's a complete piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. Wrestle is actually really good, isn't it? Wrestle is actually really good. Especially in a team like Chaos that can run around and do things. But uh, this is Chaos who so can, really can generate two dice blocks whenever they want with any player they want, basically, against most teams. Yeah. Get two dice blocks. Wrestle's pretty good. Yeah, but he could have gone infield. Wrestle house. usually... Could have gone infield, right? He, there were five, there were four squares from the go to, so he could have gone infield. So two of them he goes infield, two he stays on the sideline, which might have gone in the crowd. Um, okay. I, I guess the scatter on the sideline could have been really bad for you as well, like it goes downfield, but I still have my I still have my show hands though, could have could have gone back and got it. I yeah. think it was better. I think any throw in was better than it going next to him. But then of course if I powered him I might have just killed him, right? So yeah, that's probably better in that regard. Anyway, you don't know if again it's one of those situations where like you kill him, but I don't really think it, don't know if a removal is really impactful for the game situation there because like no. he wasn't the organizer's not doing anything impactful again anyway, so killed but him. It, it, really. it, would, it would have been if I hadn't broken armor and then he's right next to the ball when I pick it up, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's why I think it would have been better to keep, stay in bounds with it because if he stays in bounds with it, then um, I've got to go and pick it up near the dancer who then can just hit me. And, uh, 
well, I'll probably not get it back. But <laughs> Might have got it back. He probably could have 2D'd. He had the guard catcher, so he probably could have just 2D'd me with the dancer if he was there. Um, so it was, it was a good, I think it was good to get the, to get the throw in. Anyway, right. Thank you, Squirrel Dude, for the core commentary. And, uh, well, not really core, mostly just all you. <laughs> I was, I was it's fine. Weird. I didn't help you. I didn't do anything to prevent you from going insane, which is what I predicted. So I'm correct. Which <laughs> yeah. is good enough. Yeah. And you didn't coach me, unfortunately, for me, because if I'd been coached by you, I would have, I would have probably scored that turn. And yeah, actually, I, it turns out the one play where I could have coached might have been impactful. I'm glad I didn't cheat. Yes, yes, it is good that you did. Oh, you cheat. I would have been banned from a league I never played in, and all my, my entire friends list would have been banned for collusion, so um, wouldn't have wanted that. I'm sure some of my friends list had other, <laughs> has maybe one or two other Rebel coaches on it, so. <laughs> yeah. Right, thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.